Hey guys, I'm going to answer email sent to me recently. Uh, static site generators versus your typical content management system like a WordPress, a Joomla, or a Java. So uh, let me just read the email, then I'll get into the answer. So um, he has a question. He says it has to do with, with static site generators and the Jamstack. Someone recently told me to check out using Hugo instead of WordPress and use Netlify for content management. Mint. Apparently, it's all linked to the Jamstack, but I still don't really know what that is. I've done a quite a bit of freelancing off the back of your WordPress course. Changed my life. Thank you. I've taken your web professional philosophy as a bit of a goal and a way of thinking for myself. My questions are, what are these technologies? Hugo, static site generators, that's what he's talking about. How is this different from WordPress or Wix or Shopify? Uh, how might a web professional utilize these technologies to their advantage? So uh, I can't answer every question, but this is a question I uh, thought was interesting. So I'm going to read my answer and then I'm going to elaborate on this. First of all, uh, static site generators work by pre-creating all the web pages in a site so that when the pages are loaded, they are actually just normal HTML pages rather than pages created on the fly, like what you see with WordPress, Drupal, or Joomla. Um, the advantages of static site generators are, number one, much less server resources to serve a pre-generated static web pages versus on the fly dynamic pages. Static generators are also more secure since only system administrators generate pages when required so code injection etc is much more difficult to do so the larger question are static site generators needed i would say most of the time no but uh, i've used them in the past and i like them in principle but uh, they can't be used in all cases so that's my short f answer to that question so let me just elaborate on a few things here so when I say um, WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal generate their pages on the fly, these are what we used to call dynamic web pages. Basically, what WordPress, Joomla, and traditional systems do like that, uh, you, you install WordPress as an example, and then somebody will add an article. Let's say you want to write an article on Mic microphones. So you create your article, add your images, add your links to uh, social media, to video, etc. You hit publish, and WordPress will store that in a database, a database application. Most of the time it's MySQL. Then what happens when somebody loads, comes to your website, loads that page up, WordPress, the WordPress engine, which is built with PHP, will then see, oh, look, uh, Johnny wants to see that article about microphones so wordpress will go into the database grab all that information all the text etc and it would on the fly generate that html page and then sh sh present that page to the user who's reading your article on the microphones now this is basic dynamic website i teach you about this in my web stack course links below anyway so this is great. This is great. This process of on the fly generation of pages. The problem with that, if it's a problem, it's not really a problem, but the downside we'll say is that uh, this takes resources. Whenever an application talks to a database to grab information from a database, any developer will tell you, any developer knows with experience that that's an expensive operation server wise. It takes a lot of memory, it takes a lot of RAM. And to open that connection, grab the information, generate the page, and, and put it out there. On the other hand, if you have just a normal HTML page where all your code and all your, all your information is in that page and it's just saved as a page, for the server to send that page to somebody, it's like nothing. Because it doesn't have to go to a database, it doesn't have to reconstruct the page, etc. So it's a lot more efficient in terms of server processes. So a static site generator... The way it works is you log in, you create your article. Instead of storing that article information in a database and then, and then having that information pulled from the database every time somebody wants to read your article on a microphone, the static site generator will store that information in a database, but then it will create an HTML page 
with that article on the microphone, and it will put it on the server in a directory. So when somebody comes to read your article on the microphone, it just goes to that page directly, already created, it's pre-created by your static site generator application, and it just grabs that page so it doesn't have to open a connection every single time. So static site generators, one big advantage is if you have a very, very popular site, um, you could load a lot more pages generated from a static site generator with much less server power. It's just much more efficient because you're just serving up, up static, i.e. non-changing web pages. That's the big advantage. Now, static site generators do more than just create the pages. They also create uh, the links and maintain the links and connection between the pages. So let's say you have 20 articles on microphones. And at the bottom of each of your microphone article pages, you have a list of related articles. Now, if you create a new article on another microphone, you're going to want to add that link to your new article to all the other pages, all the other static pages that talk about microphones, right? You want to, you want to build that list. So what the static site generator will do is every time you publish a new article, it will know through your configuration of the system, it will know what pages it has to update. So it will go through all those pages of pre-generated and it will recreate them, update them with the latest links and so forth. Or you could log back into your static site generator application. Let's say you want to change something in an article you are written, you change it, and then it will then you hit you hit enter, boom, and you hit process and it will recreate the pages with the changes in it. Now the thing is if you have a site with hundreds, if not thousands of pages, every time you make a change, it may take a minute or two before all your pages are updated because the static site generator has to go through all the pages, make all the changes. Whereas a, an app like WordPress or Joomla or Drupal, which generates the pages on a fly, it doesn't have to do that. It just generates the page when somebody actually views that page. I don't know if this is too much, too much information here. Uh, let me give you a lot, one last thing. Now, the thing about a static site generator, they can't be used for all types of pages. If you have a page that's changing constantly, like a newsfeed page that may be changing, uh, could be changing every minute, you would have to generate new pages every minute. Well, even then, that might be doable, depending on, depending on the situation. But let's say you got like a shopping cart page. Somebody's adding items to the cart. That has to be done dynamically, right? Because you've got to build that page on the fly, depending on what people put into the shopping cart, what, what is displayed, etc. Are static site generators needed? Generally, no, because servers are so, 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 so powerful, right? That the speed advantage, you just add more CPU, but they can be used in certain circumstances. There's no question. I've used them in the past. I had a directory once, years ago. We had tens of thousands of pages in the directory uh, for web developers and stuff, and uh, it was a static site generator. And in fact, static site generation was the original way in which dynamic websites were ger generated. That's something you're going to see in the software development world. You're going to see software development paradigms, software development strategies will come and go in popularity. It's uh, funny. So static site generators were the first way uh, that uh, websites were generated. And then they moved to dynamic websites where pages re recreated every time somebody wanted to view a page. So you see these uh, cycles, like right now, like in the early days of the web, rather, in the early 90s, uh, no SQL databases were very popular. That's how people did it. And then people moved to relational databases. And now you've seen a bit of a, a, a reemergence of the popularity of no SQL databases. Now, I argued in other videos, no SQL databases have their uses, but they're they're best used in situations where you have a, a database or a store, or you have a bunch of data that doesn't have complex relationships. That's where they're better suited, where you have a ton of data that you want to store quickly and retrieve quickly, but you don't have complex relationships. That's where a NoSQL database is uh, king. But where you have complex relationships in your data, then you want to go with an SQL-based database because that's the whole point. Another name for SQL database is relational database, underlying relational, meaning relations, relations between data, right? Anyway, I'm going off on the topic here. So there you go. Yeah, so...
Is there an economic advantage using a static site generator? Mm, it really depends. If you have a very high volume site, that might be cool. Another advantage of static site generators, in theory at least, more than in theory, is that they're more secure because uh, only the administrator has access to the um, to the static site generator application that generates the page. And so when pages are loaded, they're just HTML pages. They're not PHP pages or they're not, uh, they're not dynamic pages. So they're more secure by their very nature because the pages are static. They're just HTML. So it's, it's harder, not impossible. It's harder to inject malicious code or to crack things, et cetera, et cetera. And another thing about static site generators, you can generate your entire site. You got all these, you can have tens, you can have dozens of HTML files. You can have hundreds and hundreds of HTML files all linked together by your, your generator app. And then you can export that and save that as a static site. So there are certain advantages there. Again, it depends on your circumstances. Now, when I jump to static site generators, very rarely, very rarely these days. Again, computers are just getting so bloody fast. And I think that the advantages there for most situations is really not that important. I don't know if there's a downside. The big advantage to using WordPress and uh, to a lesser extent Drupal and Joomla is the fact, the fact that you got a big ecosystem. You have a big ecosystem in terms of functionality. So you can drop in shopping carts in there. You can uh, drop in uh, paid membership areas in there with very little effort. I would imagine, I haven't, I haven't looked at these particular static site generators, I would imagine their ecosystems like Hugo, uh, Net, Netlify, Jamstack, they're not nearly as big. So you have less options. WordPress, big advantage, of course, is the WordPress theming uh, options out there. The themes are just the visual templates. You got a huge number out there that you can build off of. So as I mentioned in the past, uh, you always have to look at the market in terms of determining your technology choices a lot of times. Yeah, you have to look at the market. So how many potential employers are going to be looking for Jamstack people? Compared to WordPress people, I would imagine it's a tiny amount. And uh, then you have to look at, um, well, there you go. I think that covers everything. So I think you understand the difference between the static site generator versus your typical dynamic web app like a Drupal, like a WordPress, like a Joomla. Most of the web, by the way, is dynamically created, like the vast majority. Static site generation is a niche technology at this point in time. It has its, pro it, it's, its pluses. And I have to tell you, uh, just like in terms of personal gut feeling, I just, I like the idea of static site generators because a lot of times when I read an article, that's it. I read it once, and that's that's it. I don't change it very often. That's a great candidate for a static site generator. And, um, yeah, that's it. I don't see any other advantages of static site generators off the top of my head. Better security, not to say that uh, dynamic uh, generation tools like a content managers, like content manager systems like WordPress are, are insecure. They are pretty secure these days. Uh, but yeah, they're, in theory, they're better security with them and they will take much less resources in serving out pages. But again, servers are powerful. All right. I hope that answers that question. Ciao.